I almost didn't make this video because at a glance, Adrian was just an enthusiastic warmonger, possibly a masochist with a death wish. Not a lot of depth. But if you scratch below the surface, there's a more nuanced and inspiring character here than you would expect, and a life that could reframe how you see the world, possibly for the better. In this episode, we're diving into the things that made Adrian Carton de Wiart cheersworthy, and along the way, we're going to explore a cheersworthy whiskey to honor a lifetime of courage humor, and survival. All right, Brianna, how would you say this name right here? Um, Adrian Carton de Wiart. That's actually way better than my first dozen attempts. Guy right here. You see this? Does it really? Does it really look like the ultimate badass? No. What do you see? I mean, I see an incredible mustache. Oh yeah. Okay, eye patch is pretty cool. I agree. Anytime you can go full pirate, you go full pirate. There's also something that okay. you're not noticing in this photo yet. Uh, that he's missing a hand. Yeah. Or an arm. Okay. Also, why are his thighs like that? He was a bullet magnet. You know, he, he goes through World War, the Boer War, <laughs> World War One, World War Two. He was shot. Stomach, groin, face. He got shot in the face? Yeah, his eye hit his ear. He was shot in the hip. He was shot in the leg. He was shot in the ankle. Giant piece of shrapnel blew off his hand. The hospital that he recovered at, they just kept his pajamas on standby because he kept showing back up. He was either the luckiest man alive or the most unlucky man alive. Did you read my script? <laughs> no. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> and if you think all of those injuries were just unlucky, there's something important you should consider. He wasn't in the wrong place at the wrong time. Adrian was exactly where he wanted to be, despite the danger. But where did that mindset, that attitude come from? How was he not discouraged? From the camel cord, a gut shot, bullet to the face, losing an eye, hip, leg, ankle, shot in the back of the head, losing a hand, becoming Churchill's go-to diplomat, Hello there. prisoner of war, endearingly defiant in his circumstances, Adrian was the ultimate survivor. And from that thread, if we need a cheersworthy whiskey category that has survived a gauntlet, it's got to be Irish whiskey. The category went from being the most popular spirit in the world that experienced political, economic, and technological challenges so intense that it brought it to near extinction by the mid-20th century. Irish whiskey symbolizes survival against the odds, and today, it's made a remarkable comeback. And Adrian was the king of comebacks. We want to know how he did the things that he did. First, humor. At his core, Adrian Carton de Wiart was a happy warrior, and he carried that light-heartedness throughout his entire life. Even in the face of horrific injuries, his attitude always seemed bigger than his circumstances. For example, in April of 1941, Carton de Wiart was flying to Yugoslavia to liaise with the Yugoslav government in response to the Axis invasion. They're on a plane, they're over the, the ocean, and then one of the engines goes out and they have to crash land in the ocean. Oh my gosh. Miles okay. from shore, they finally get to shore, immediately captured by the Italians. Balls. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Adrian is 61 years old when this happens. He was held at a castle near Florence that had been converted into a POW camp for Allied officers. And during his captivity, he was so witty and good natured and good humored that even the Italians kind of like him. And he is constantly trying to escape. One of the most famous escape attempts involved him and other prisoners digging a tunnel under the castle walls to escape. One eye, one hand, in his 60s, digging escape tunnels from a castle. <laughs> <laughs> they tunnel under the walls, they get out, wow. but they're recaptured pretty quickly. And it's a one-handed, one-eyed guy limping through the street. He was so personable. Whenever they brought him back, they're like, you know what? He's gonna escape. Let's see if we can make him more comfortable. Those prisoner clothes, those don't look those raggedy things. Can we get you a nice Italian suit? So I said, I don't want no Italian suit. This yes. is my tailor, Seville Row in London. Go get me a respectable suit. Now wear that. And they did. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he told the Italians. Yeah. I don't want your garbage fancy clothes. Yeah. This is my guy. Yeah. Why don't you call him up? Have him make me yeah. a suit that I actually like. Yeah. And they were like, you know what? Sure. This episode is sponsored by NordVPN. Nord All right, NordVPN, when it comes to the security and the safety of your online experience, kind of a huge deal. Have you ever had your identity stolen? Yes. No, uh, I haven't. Okay, I have. <laughs> Why would you say yes? 
<laughs> it's super, super easy to have this secure layer around all of your activity on the internet. So if you have like young kids or older elderly people online, you wanna make sure they don't get you know, malicious downloads and in, into unsavory corners of the internet where stuff gets really unsecured, really risky. And really weird. Yeah, then NordVPN can provide that additional layer of security. Now, if we're being, you know, frank though, the most use that at least I get out of NordVPN is to be able to watch whatever you want to watch wherever you are without getting region locked without out of- Without being censored by your government. <laughs> So NordVPN is going to allow you to connect to servers around the world. 5,400 servers, 60 countries included in that. They're going to have access to certain kinds of content through like your streaming players, your Netflixes and your Hulus and whatnot. You just connect virtually through NordVPN to another server anywhere in the world and you can get access to the things you want to get access to. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not sure about it. They have a 30 day money back guarantee to try it out. You're gonna go to nordvpn.com slash whiskey tribe and receive an exclusive discount plus four bonus months for free. Adrian was 63 when he was released and immediately requested to be put back on active duty and Winston Churchill, big fan of Adrian by the way, he <laughs> sent Adrian to China as his personal representative playing a significant diplomatic and advisory role until the end of World War II. What a badass, Look at that, dude. that guy, you see that guy? I mean, the, just, wow, the, the persevering, perseverance. Perseverance? Perseverance. Yeah. And in his autobiography, Happy Odyssey, Carton de Wiart recounts his adventures misadventures with levity and wit he could laugh at himself and his predicaments even when they weren't funny at all he could joke about his multiple injuries and escapes and his propensity for getting shot tis but a scratch a scratch your arms off no it isn't and before we start believing that his life was a cartoon adventure yeah he was all too familiar with struggles beyond the battlefield his wife died well before her time so did adrian's infant daughter. There was financial and family drama he had to deal with. So his optimism, his resilience was tested in challenges that you and I can relate to. And I know this wasn't an intentionally funny part of his life, but Adrian's wife's name, pronounce the name of his wife. Fre Frederike Maria Caroline Henrietta Rosa Sabina Franziska Fugger von Babenhausen. <laughs> Adrian's humor, as captured in his writings and the memories of those close to him, established the legacy of a man who was remarkably buoyant and adaptable in the face of adversity. But if humor was all that it took to survive and thrive in bad situations, comedians would be bulletproof. Adrian had something else courage. Now, immediately, Knowing that is obvious, and it's not very useful to you. He was courageous. Good for him. This guy lived a life that was very different from ours. The bravest thing I did this week was let the barista put real dairy in my cappuccino when they ran out of oat milk. How is a courageous man, a brave man long dead, relevant to your life today? And it's helpful to know that Adrian wasn't destined for the battlefield. The dude grew up rich very well connected and could have easily lived a comfortable life of privilege and refinement. But, but as far as Adrian was concerned, his only interest was in fighting the good fight. But before we lionize this guy too much, one of the things people don't really get into is the young Adrian, mm -hmm. he didn't really care who he fought for. He just wanted to fight. At 16, he lies about his age and tries to join the military. Faked an accent, gave some bullshit story about being from South Africa. Didn't work, they sent him home. A few years later, he lies again about his age and combat experience, but it worked. And Adrian finally sees a real battle in the Second Boer War and immediately gets shot in the gut and the groin. And I know the ideal soldier is the man who fights for his country because it is fighting, and for no other reason. Causes, politics, and ideologies are better left to the historians. He's often heralded as one of Britain's finest, an inspirational example of resilience and duty and honor and loyalty, a true patriot and a brave warrior of the highest order, which is true. But at first, Adrian was thinking more like a mercenary than a patriot. At that moment, I knew, once and for all, that war was in my blood. If the British didn't fancy me, I would offer myself to the Boers. Half Irish, born in Belgium to an aristocratic family, his deep commitment and loyalty to Britain wasn't a given. 
it developed over time. It was the experience of fighting alongside those men for a country and getting that recognition, having those experiences that caused him to fall in love with the nation. It's interesting how much of a cornerstone figure he became in British military accidentally. And I don't want to make light of getting injured in combat. It's a horrific ordeal, but you could not keep Adrian down. He was exceptional among already exceptional men and women. His reputation grew. He became an inspiration, a fixture of British military culture. But when he got started, he just wanted to fight. But his exceptionalism built an accidental cornerstone that's similar to how Powers Irish Whiskey became a cornerstone, a fixture in the Irish whiskey scene, James Power was an innkeeper from Dublin. He wasn't trying to become an Irish whiskey pioneer in 1791. James only started distilling his own whiskey when he was not happy with the whiskey that he had to buy for his inn. But his efforts were exceptional. His reputation grew, and soon Powers Whiskey became so popular that it took on a life of its own. He outgrew the inn, but Powers hit it big when they established a large distillery on John's Lane. Another exceptional spirit establishes an accidental cornerstone. Today, Powers is huge, and the John's Lane is exceptional. It is delicious. There's a lemoniness, but then there's also like an herbal mm -hmm. kind of botanicaliness in there. Yeah, and then there's like a creamy vanilla shortbread cookie basiness to there's, it. It's more of a, I guess, yeah, shortbread cookie's good. I was gonna say it's kind of crumbly. Mm -hmm. So desserty, man. Oh, this hell is, yeah. Honey, oh. cream, vanilla. That is the aftertaste of, dare I say it, Lorna Dune. Lorna Dune. <laughs> In these episodes, I, I try to prioritize people that had really interesting things to say, people with a lot of quotes. Adrian did not have a love of the pin. We are told that the pin is mightier than the sword, but I know which of these weapons I would choose. Fortunately, my research was able to find very inspirational quotes that occurred. For example, the moment he got shot in the face then how can you forget the moment he got shot through the groin? Oh, are you kidding me? You're gonna shoot me in the After an absolute whirlwind of mental and physical trials, he was famously quoted as saying, frankly, I had enjoyed the war. It would be really easy to interpret that as a glorification of conflict, but remember the source. This guy knew better than anybody the true cost of war, and I think those words showed the ability to find joy and purpose in the midst of adversity rather than a love of bloodshed. You probably have more in common with this guy than you think. We hear a word like aristocratic and think, ooh la la, I wonder what kind of life that's like. But if you consider the main advantages rich people had back in the day, it was things like stable source of nutrition and shelter, the ability to travel, career options, access to information. Most of us have options today that were only available to the aristocracy not long ago. That's a fairly recent development in human history. Everybody starts at zero. And Adrian wasn't born a legend. And it shows how a simple desire for adventure can mature into commitment grounded in firm principles. In other words, he grew. He chose his path. He committed to it completely. And by committing to a path that was bigger than himself, bigger than getting shot in the face, the ear, the stomach, the groin, the leg, the ankle, the hip, the hand, big enough that his men saw him pulling pins from grenades with his teeth and hurling them with his one good arm during the Battle of the Somme, from that path, Adrian Carton de Wiart became one of the most courageous and resilient men to ever live. I think we'd be well served to remember that courage stems from purpose. If you're still trying to find your path, you probably don't need to get shot, but when you push yourself into a new experience looking for a challenge worthy of your best effort, your commitment, your sacrifice, your purpose becomes clear and your courage undeniable. Adrian would have loved nothing more than to go out in a blaze of glory, but he spent his final years in a quiet fishing community in Cork County, Ireland, where this whiskey is made. I visited Cork County, Ireland, where Adrian retired. We toured the Powers Quarter with a bunch of magnificent bastards in Ireland. The Whiskey Tribe's official toast is actually a modified version of a very, very old Irish toast. Somehow I think Adrian would have liked it. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for your friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. In the comments, who's our next cheersworthy person or whiskey? And speaking of accidental cornerstones, we're finally publicly releasing 
Dolphin Smooth Straight Bourbon Whiskey. There's dozens of whiskeys available in Crowded Barrel's tasting room, but 40% of our guests are choosing this classic bourbon as their favorite in blind lineups. It's 46% ABV, classic profile, balanced with an approachable, dare I say, smooth texture. Now, the link to this first batch is in the description. Heaton and I also launched a new podcast called Would You Touch It, where we discuss the kinds of hypothetical questions you kick around with your friends around a good bottle of whiskey, like would you choose to initiate first contact with aliens, or would you give everyone superpowers with the push of a button? That link also in the description. Cheers.